So, um, uh, we're gonna do it, aren't we? We're gonna roll with the It's Your Boy intro. It's your boy. When I did my review of the i7 7700K and both the i5 7600K, I noticed that the temperatures were ridiculously high. And so today I'm gonna to be deleting a 7700K, I'm gonna be looking at the temperatures and seeing how much of a difference it makes. <laughs> Welcome back to Tech City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with sort of like a guide and a little bit of a free discussion about the i7-7700K that I recently delitted. Now, if you guys wanna do this, I recommend getting a specialized tool. Now, the difference is between this generation and Skylake as well, versus Haswell and also the previous generation before that, Ivy Bridge, which is like your i7-3770K and your i7-4770K, is that they had a thicker PCB. So you could essentially clamp them in a vise and then use a hammer and bang off the lid, and then you could put on some new thermal paste. The problem, however, this generation with Skylake and both Cabby Lake is that the PCB is really thin on these retail chips. It's so thin, in fact, that I don't recommend using the vice method, either with a hammer or using the vice itself to diagonally unclamp the chip from the heat sink. This time around, however, there are some sellers on eBay, for example, selling these kits that I got here for about 18 Australian dollars, which would probably be around 14 USD. So it's actually pretty damn cheap. That was included with postage too for that price. And so if you get one of these kits, you can essentially apply all the pressure evenly across the kit. Uh, this kit here looks like it was 3D printed, and there is a guy in Europe doing these kits. I think his name is Debor. Sorry if I butchered that pronunciation, but there is a guy over in Europe selling these kits for around about 30 euro. I don't know how much extra postage is, but apparently they've got a wait time on them, so I decided not to wait and get this one off eBay. So anyway, after you get yourself one of these kits, you can then bang off the lid from the PCB. In this case, I had to use this in conjunction with the rubber mallet. Though after you do that, you will then have to apply some specialized thermal paste. I don't recommend all your normal stuff, like your Arctic Silver or your MX4, for example, as they will just dry up from the intense heat emitted from the dye. I use Cool Laboratories Liquid Pro. This stuff is legit. I've used it in the past, though there are a few others out there that people do recommend. I just stick to Liquid Pro as I know it does a really good job. So after you've spread it out the thermal paste on the die, you can then connect the integrated heat spreader on there and then clamp it down using your motherboard's pressure. So now to the juicy part of the video, the results. We're talking like at least a 20 degree drop here. And not only that, higher overclocks. When I did my i7-7700K uh, review, I could only get this thing to 4.9 gigahertz. Though after I delitted it, I could now get it to 5.1 gigahertz and I could even boot into Windows and get to the OS screen before it crashed at 5.2 gigahertz. Now keep in mind, I would give it more voltage, but it is really hot at the moment. This is at 33 or 32 degrees at the moment. So the temperatures are ridiculously hot in here and I still managed to pull off a 5.1 gigahertz overclock. And looking at the temperatures, this is probably the most important part when you delid. Uh, when I was benchmarking at 4.9 gigahertz before I delitted, this thing was going near 100 degrees. It was going well over 90 degrees, completely not recommended to anyone out there for 24 seven operation. Though after I delitted, this thing was sitting around 80 degrees at 5.1 gigahertz. So the difference is huge, uh, not only for the temperatures, but also for 24 seven stable operation and also if you guys wanna get a higher overclock out of your Cabby Lake CPUs. Now, one thing I will discuss with this is that it's really crazy because you would think with, uh, as the generations of CPUs go on, Intel would put better thermal paste on these CPUs, but I don't think they are. I mean, with the Haswell refresh, they kind of did get it right with the thermal paste on those chips where the temperatures were a lot lower than the previous two generations before that. But it seems like with Cabby Lake, they've done it again where they've just put cheap thermal paste on. And this stuff is really cheap. When I delitted the CPU, this stuff was like rubber. So anyway guys, to sum things up quickly, if you are getting a Cabby Lake CPU and you do want to overclock, then I can highly recommend delitting this thing and getting not only higher overclocks, but much better temperatures. So I'll put some links in the description below if you want to get some of the gear. Though keep in mind, some of these D-Lid kits, they will be tough to get, but I'm sure they'll become more popular as more people want to D-Lid their Cabby Lake CPUs. Anyway guys, let me know in the comments section what you think about Cabby Lake. I honestly think it's pretty piss weak. 
that they have done this again with this generation of CPUs. Love to hear your thoughts and opinions as always in the comments section, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Also, the benchmark PC is done, though I am having some problems with this 280X. It's like kind of like green screening on me when I'm getting to Windows. So I gotta fix that problem, but then the benchmark PC is on its way. It is coming to you guys. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.